all right good evening everyone so we're back at it again on the car um in my quest for more cooling since i overheat on the track um i made some modifications you know the first thing i did is i moved the engine oil cooler um that's really small like a 10 row and a transmission cooler i moved it behind the fog lights and that's in another one of my videos but another thing is still driving around this texas heat um in august you know 100 degree heat 90 degree heat 103 degree heat with, without even considering the humidity um if i get stuck in stop and go traffic or any type of traffic i mean my temperature with the ac running will get in the 230s 240s and that's when i start getting real scared and just turn it off so what i got here is a new radiator so everyone knows you can upgrade your radio your stock radiator which is a single row costs about 110 dollars um that's a stock radiator you can upgrade it to like a dewitz a b cool uh mishimoto i think it was called and they cost about 600 to 800 dollars just to get a two core radiator so what i got here is a different radiator from a company called engineered cooling products um there's a specially built corvette radiator and you're getting it for a reasonable price and this costs about 260 280 ship to my door so twice as much as a stock radiator but a hell of a lot cheaper than a um um one of those dewitt's reader uh, radiators. so this is also i'm gonna go and pull it out um i'm not really big into um hold on, let me stop the camera i can't get it with one hand okay so here is the radiator um and um you know i'm by like i was saying a second ago by no means am i like a professional or know anything about welding but i mean check a look at the welds here they look you know they look fine to me um and so what it is it's the same thing as the um dewitt's or anything like that it's a two core radiator um this is specifically meant for a i think this is the valve to open and close it to drain it or not i think um this is actually meant for automatic transmission. I've already checked it. Has all the proper hookups um, so that they could be a direct fit with no issues. So what I'm going to do now um, is just go ahead and install the radiator. No sense in me showing you guys how to do all that type of stuff because I've already got a video on how to do a radiator. Um, you know, basically I'm going to come over here and take off the whole air bridge, the whole air intake, um, undo two, ho uh, three hoses. One big hose up here, small hose over there, um, then another, the lower radiator hose, then the two um, the two transmission connections, and then there's the two bolts to hold the fan on. So it's relatively simple, not much to take on and off, um, but let's go ahead and start with this, uh, taking the air bridge off from the fan shroud and get moving. Okay, as you can see, we got the radiator out, really, really straightforward, just a messy job with all the coolant. Um, stock radiators right here. Um, Probably some of this uh, grass from when I went off track that one time might have interfered with some of the cooling, but um, it's still a good radiator, so perfectly good shape. So let's go ahead and slide this one in. As you can see, let me get both of them together. You can see how big a difference they are. Okay, as you can see, here's both radiators together. Hope you can see with this light. Um, I don't know if you can really tell. But I mean, this one over here is significantly much thicker than the, um, as you can see right there, significantly much thicker than the uh, stock radiator. So we're going to go ahead and slide this in and um, put everything back together. Okay, so I got the radiator almost back in there. And it's like almost 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. And I ran into some issues. Um, mainly ran into issues with hooking the transmission lines back up to the car so at first um i thought that they didn't give me the right fittings or there weren't any fittings because these are two different sizes um this where is it at i put the original away but so i didn't think they came with the right size and so i went through all my brass fittings and trying to figure something out here with um you know like a barbed hose and I was going to cut the ends off but um, so I ended up going all the way to the auto parts store and finding one of two uh, I found this this one right here 
and that would have worked fine if I cut the hose or cut the end, took the fitting off the end. But they only had one and didn't have two. Then I got to thinking and looking around and actually looked deep down inside the box that's over there. They actually came with replacement fittings for the transmission lines. So I wasted a trip and about an hour of my time because I only got to go to the auto parts store. There's 24 hours. I also went to Walmart to see because I couldn't find two two of the same ones uh, of those fittings. I thought maybe Walmart might have another one, but of course Walmart didn't. So here I am now that I dig through the box and found the fitting work. So this one went on pretty easy. Um, now I'm underneath um, dicking around with the second one. And as you can see, hopefully you can see, I know my lighting is all bad. Uh, yeah, you can sort of see it there. Let me see. Okay, you can sort of see it there. I am messing with this because it won't just slip off is the problem I'm having. Um, I don't know if you can tell because it might be too much light reflecting, but um, it won't come off after I've taken the pin off. And so what I'm doing is sticking a knife in here and I am trying to break apart the little, the little tab that's holding it on there. I know you can't really see it because I got this headlamp on. Let's see here. So yeah, this is it. I know you can't see it that well, especially with the black piece covering it. Let's see. Everything's always in my damn way when I'm trying to do some video editing here. Okay, so there, there it is. See, it's all kind of chewed up because I'm trying to stick a knife in there and break the little tabs off so I can get this uh, fitting off. Since so you can see, I already got it start it there in the train I uh, put it in a train in the actual radiator so I just need to take this fitting off and I can just slap us uh, 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 clip it in so I got two of them broken off the third one I'm kind of got bent so I'm gonna try to get it off here um, but other than that all the hoses are hooked up and that's just the last thing I need to do so let's just keep going okay everyone so we're gonna go ahead and close this video out and I apologize I have not uploaded video in about two or three weeks um, just been caught up with a whole bunch of other things so I got the radiator installed and it's been many months since I've had it installed and it's actually running pretty great I haven't really had a good chance to really um, test it on the track and really hot weather but I did do a crescent event um, a couple of months ago that one that we ran and um, my temperatures actually did pretty well. I can't remember. They did not go over 210 or two or something like that. Um, doing a 1.7. I think I might have completed my um, cooling journey as far as that, all the cooling I want to do for this car. So I got a dual core engineering cooling performance radiator, which is outstanding, direct fit, um, priced appropriately right, as opposed to like Dewitts or anything like that. It's like 700, 800 dollars. Um, I also got uh, one last thing I also did and I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys is I took my um, um, this can you see it I took this that radiate that uh, engine oil cooler that I showed you a long time ago and I actually laid it flat here um, up in the grill and it's uh, got steel braided lines make sure you use steel braided lines I have a long story on how that went um, and my oil is doing extremely well. I was seeing um, around 260, 280 um, on my oil um, on the track sessions. Now I'm seeing about 230s, 240s, which is where it needs to be. It was just getting too hot. So you can see I got lines running pretty long on the oil coolers, but it's doing extremely well. Um, and I'm happy with it. So um, that's kind of it for my cooling. We'll know when I start doing track sessions here in the summer coming up in 2020 um how well they hold up but i don't want to do any more i mean it's 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 just been enough money put into this car in a year alone with all the brakes and stuff like that and stay tuned for my next video i'm gonna talk what happened with my drive shaft which is in this box um if you haven't been to the channel before please like please subscribe and thank you for watching